Um, our next speaker is Jasper van der Bosse, and uh, he's going to talk to us. Well, he's an engineer um, at ML6, and um, he's worked on AI and ML um, functionality for Beam. And he is going to tell us about clustering in Apache Beam. Um, I'm very interested in this talk, and uh, I recommend it. So go ahead, Jasper. All right, so uh, welcome everybody to this uh, talk about clustering in Apache Beam. Uh, my name is Jasper. I'm a software engineer at ML6, which is a company uh, all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in Belgium. What we do is we build um, custom ML uh, applications for a wide variety of industries, ranging from semantic search implementations to uh, computer vision and quality inspection and all those kinds of really cool ML uh, things. And what I'm going to talk about today about is uh, clustering in Apache Beam, which is a collaboration we've been doing with, a, uh, with Google. Uh, so we have implemented a experimental transform to cluster data in uh, Apache Beam. Uh, so we're first going to go over um, what clustering actually is. Uh, because I don't know uh, if everybody already is familiar with this uh, machine learning technique. And now we're going to look at uh, how it's implemented in Apache Beam itself, together with an example pipeline. So the first question, what is Apache Beam and what is uh, clustering? So clustering is an unsupervised technique to group together uh, similar data points based on characteristics. And that may sound like a lot to unpack, uh, so don't worry, uh, we're going to go over this step by step. So first thing is uh, clustering is an unsupervised method, which means that we will train a machine learning model on a data set that is unlabeled. So there are basically two types of data sets. So a labeled data set means that each data instance has a label or the ground truth. So the expected output that the machine learning model should predict if you were to give it that data instance. On the other hand, uh, unsupervised machine learning applications or training um, means that we will train on unlabeled data, meaning that we don't have the ground truth. That's the case in most real life applications, simply because labeling data is very expensive. So clustering is actually a very useful technique. So um, the next thing is uh, how is that data actually grouped together? Um, well, clustering is actually not an algorithm itself. It's actually a collection of different algorithms. Uh, for instance, you have spectral clustering, which is based on distance matrices and uh, eigenvalues. It's basically based on linear algebra. On other hands, you could also use dbscan, which is density-based clustering. So it will take a look at the density uh, of how points are yeah, basically close together uh, within the feature space. Uh, another very uh, useful one or very popular algorithm is uh, k-means clustering which is a clustering technique where we are going to define n clusters. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically choose n random points in the feature space. And we are then going to look at the data points in the data set. And each data point is then assigned to uh, the closest cluster center. And then we're going to start iterating over this process. So what we're going to do is for each uh, cluster center, we're going to uh, basically get all the data points that are assigned to that cluster. We're going to take the mean of that cluster, and then we're going to generate a new cluster center. We're going to repeat this until um, we have uh, cluster centers that are basically converged and don't move anymore. And this is also the algorithm we were going to use in this um, transform. And there is one more important thing you need to know um, when it comes to clustering in Apache Beam, and that is online versus offline clustering. 
So on one hand, you have offline clustering, which means that you have all the data available at the start of the clustering process. That means that um, you can use all the information of the data set to generate your clusters. On the other hand, you have online clustering, which means that at the start of your algorithm, you don't have all data points yet. So you're basically going to uh, process the data batch by batch. So you're going to get in the first batch, you're going to start clustering, then you're going to get your new batch, and then you're going to recluster and so on and so forth. You're basically going to iteratively uh, cluster your data. And Basically, this means that we will need this online clustering uh, algorithms uh, in Apache Beam simply because we want to support both batch data and uh, streaming data. And we would not be able to use an offline clustering algorithm with uh, streaming data. So grouping together elements is fun and all, but what can you actually do with it in real life? Well, you can basically do anomaly detection, which is basically detecting data points that aren't exactly like the other expected data points. And that can be used, for instance, to detect fraudulent uh, transactions uh, in a banking context. Or it could do uh, disease detection on medical data. So you have a lot of medical parameters and you can kind of spot uh, someone who has yeah, a disease because some of his parameters are off. Or you can use it to do quality control, like you have uh, a certain standard uh, you want to have for your product that you're producing. And if some of the parameters are very different from all the other data points, you might have a defect or something. But it can also be used to do uh, spam filtering. So you have all your normal mails and then you have your mail that is uh, looking a little bit fishy, uh, you might want to filter that out as well. That's also an anomaly. Another one uh, application is uh, personalization. So you can you cluster people together to give them personalized ads. So you can basically group them together on their interests or whatever purchasing, purchasing history they have or you can use it to give movie recommendations or music recommendations in a streaming service uh, based on the taste of uh, similar people. Uh, another one, a uh, really interesting one, is for instance grouping together uh, documents. This is a bit of a more advanced application. So what you can basically do is you have a whole bunch of text documents and you're going to put them through a language model. And that language model is then going to output something that's called embeddings. And an embedding is basically a mapping of texts into an n-dimensional space. So what you're going to have is a whole bunch of points. And what you're then going to do is you're going to cluster together those points. Uh, and there's embeddings that's actually the very basis of all those large language models and all those really cool applications you see with like ChatGPT and all those kinds of things. So even that is useful over here. So how does the application or how does the clustering work in Apache B? So it's actually a twofold uh, transform. And why it is is because we want to transform, we want to do this on both batch data, but also on window data. So you have a windowing, uh, you basically don't want to calculate the whole clustering on each window because it's typically a very expensive operation. Uh, so that's why we decided to split the transform in two steps. So the first one, we're going to pre-process the data so that's in the right format and so on and so forth. So that it's ready for the actual clustering algorithm to process that data. Then we're going to actually save that model. And then the second step, we're going to load the model and then we're going to calculate the predictions, uh, which means that we're going to assign every data point to a cluster. So let's go over this step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the pre-processing. So I have a whole bunch of data coming in. And what we're going to do is we're going to create batches of data. Why are we going to do this? Uh, simply for uh, efficiency reasons. 
So you want to basically process this, this data set batch by batch. Um, then we're going to basically put it in the right format. So we're going to convert everything for, to NumPy arrays, just simply for uh, efficiency reasons and for uh, simplicity reasons in the uh, application itself. And we're also going to put it in the right shape so that the underlying model, which is a uh, scikit-learn model, can actually handle that data and cal calculate the clusters. What we're then actually going to do is we're going to step by step um, start adding data to uh, the clustering model and it's then going to adjust these clusters until every data is processed and you have your final clustering. And something to notice here is that this transform is a stateful transform. So we're basically going to uh, process every batch by patch. And what we're going to do is, so we're going to load the first batch, we're going to calculate the initial clusterings, and we're going to save that to a state. And then when the next batch is being processed, what we're going to do is we're going to first load the state. So the previous cluster centers are loaded. Then we're going to add data, update the cluster centers, and then we're going to write that state back to the state. And now we're going to do this batch by batch. So this transform is actually a sequential transform. And as a final step, uh, we're going to save the model uh, to persistent storage. And the reason we do this is because the clustering is actually typically, uh, especially on larger data, uh, a very expensive operation. Uh, and if we have to rerun this clustering every time, we might waste a lot of computes uh, simply recalculating clusters. So once we have calculated our clusters, it's time to actually assign a cluster to each data point, which is a very simple uh, inference call, basically. So let's look at an example pipeline for this, uh, how this looks in code. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, cluster together uh, houses in California. It's a very simple, data set that's typically being used to teach people machine learning applications and so on and so forth. So what we are basically going to do is we're going to do it very simply. We're going to take three features, longitude, latitude, and the income of the owner. It's purely for simplicity reasons. And the first thing uh, we're going to do is, oh, this is not right, but we're basically going to load data first uh, into the housing features. And what we're then going to do is we are going to um, call the online clustering transform. We're going to pass the algorithm that we want to use, which is in this case, the online k-means algorithm. We're going to say uh, we want to use six clusters. So we're going to basically group uh, data in six different groups. And we're going to use a batch size in the processing of 256 elements for, uh, well, basically efficiency reasons. We could also add uh, some extra arguments if we wanted to. Uh, that is basically some extra sklearn uh, arguments. And we are not going to do this because this is a simple example. Uh, the final parameter is a checkpoints checkpot which is basically the part where we're going to store the finalized model. And then in the second step, we're actually going to load this model and we're going to assign every element in data set the cluster it should be added to. So oh, there was a, the pre-processing step where we had to load the data. So uh, in summary, what have we learned today is, um, so clustering is actually this technique we can use to group together elements unsupervised, so meaning on unlabeled data. And we can have a lot of applications to grouping that data, which go from uh, anomaly detection for uh, bank fraud to quality control, uh, to personalization of ads and recommendations for music. And we can now do this in Apache Beam as well. 
Uh, we can process both streaming data and batch data thanks to online clustering algorithms. And it is a two-step uh, transform where we first going to process the data and then calculate the, uh, the clustering sensors and then save the model. And then we're going to load the model. And then once the model is loaded, we're going to uh, calculate a cluster uh, for every element in the data set. And that was basically it. Uh, thank you all for coming to this talk and uh, I'll happily answer your questions. <laughs>